Hi there, welcome to the Schwoben's Nest. My name is Sandra, and I'm so glad you're here. Today I'm working outside in my garage. It's finally starting to be nice and warm here, at least warm enough that I can wear a t-shirt outside and not get too cold. I got a request from one of the stores that I am in to create some teacup bird feeders. And so what I'm going to do is first use my weld bond glue and I'm going to permanently glue the teacup to the saucer. I'm going to use a fairly large amount of glue as you can see me doing there because I want to make sure that it's going to hold really well placing it right in the center of the saucer and then I'm just going to set it aside to dry. I'm going to do the same thing with these other two. Now they are cups from Ikea. They're not necessarily teacups but I thought a few different sizes might be nice as well. These also did not come with any saucers so I just went to the thrift store and I looked for different saucers that might work and I'm just going to mix and match and make them look really unique. Please excuse the mess on my workspace. I was doing about five or six different projects all at the same time. So while I wait for the teacups to cure, I needed to put some type of base on the bottom. This is just a piece of deck board that I cut down to size using my miter saw. And now I'm going to use my nail gun, which is an air gun. And I'm going to put some nails into the bottom of the board onto the spindle so it all holds together. Then I just did the same thing for the other two spindles. Once the glue on the teacups had cured long enough that I was able to pick them out without them sliding around, this is probably about half hour, 40 minutes perhaps, I'm adding a lot more glue to the spindle top and then I'm going to just simply center the teacup with the saucer right on top of the spindle. I ended up putting a little bit too much glue on this one so I am taking a little bit off because I didn't want there to be too much excess that it will just slide around and not stay in place. Excuse my flip-flops and my funky leggings. I was just working really comfortable that day. Here's how all three of these teacups turned out. I've got to do three more for Stephanie up at the store, but I think these are beautiful. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you clicked on my video. If you like what you're seeing so far, I would love it if you could hit that red button and stick around a while. For this second project, I'm starting off with a base piece of wood that is a two by six that I cut square using my miter saw. Then I'm going to use a two by four and I've cut that square as well. So the bottom piece is six by six inches and the top piece is four by four inches. I started by screwing in from the bottom first so I could attach the two together. Then I realized once I had these two attached that I needed to put the spindle on the smaller piece first. Anyway, I ended up having to pull it all apart and start over, but basically you're going to be attaching the spindle to the 2x4 and then you'll be attaching the spindle and the 2x4 to the 2x6. And I used screws for all of this, but I did need to pre-drill a hole in the spindle because the, that wood is really hard. This is the spindle I'm using. It's left over from one of the bed frames that I took apart last year. I've got the spindle all put together and now I'm going to show you what I'm putting on top. I am going to screw in this white and black enamel colander that I got at the thrift store for $2.99. I was super excited when I saw this because I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. 
first I'm going to need to drill another hole in the top of the spindle and I'm using a drill bit that's a little bit smaller than the screw I'm going to use. I'm going to go in fairly deep because I want to make sure that this is nice and secure. Now even though the colander has holes at the bottom, the hole isn't big enough for me to fit the screw in that I would like to use. So I'm taking a metal drill bit that's quite a bit larger than my screw and I'm just popping it through the hole that was already there. Now make sure when you're wanting to get away any of the shavings, these are metal, they can cut you. So just be very careful when you're drilling with metal. And now my screw fits in there perfectly. Now all that's left is to put these two pieces together and hanging on to the spindle because it's going to start to spin in just a second. There it goes. So I've got to hang on really tight and then just put my screw right down using my impact driver. And I really love how this is turning out. While I was still outside, I gave the spindle one coat of spray paint, not a full coat as you can see. Some of the wood is still coming through and that's all right because I'm just going to take some of my chalk paint and give it a rough coat. I do want some of those dark pieces to show, especially because the spindle has so many grooves in it. And then I don't even have to distress it. It's already distressed. I really love how this turned out and I can't wait for the weather to get even better so I can put some live plants in it and put it out on my front porch. For this project, I'm going to be using some more of my spindles. I've already attached these with my nail gun to the bases. What I'm doing now is just drilling all the way through from one end to the other, about an inch or so from the top, making sure that it goes all the way through and the hole is nice and clean. You might recognize these little windmills. I did a windmill project like this a while back, but these are the windmills from the Dollar Tree. Those are the little stakes that you get and they have a little welcome sign underneath them. I took them all apart and I gave them a couple of coats of white spray paint. Using some cutters, I'm going to take this little stake and just cut a length, probably about four inches. Then I'm going to be taking it and bending it. And why I'm doing that is because I want it to be locked into the top part of the spindle. So first I'm just bending it somewhat into a 90 degree angle so I can fit it into the hole. Putting the windmill on the little wire and then pushing it through, I'm going to leave it about a half an inch from the spindle. And that will give me enough space to just trim off a little bit more of this wire and bend it so the windmill doesn't fall off. I still want the windmill to be able to spin as you can see me doing here. So I'm just judging to make sure I have enough space for it to do that. I figured out that an inch and a half would be enough, so I'm just going to be cutting off some of the excess. Then I'm going to fit the windmill blades back on and then bend the wire down. Now I ended up changing that and turning it around so the wire was bent up and that ensured that the blades would stay in place. Once I had it bent up enough, I was able to just give it a little bit of a squeeze and close it up, sort of like an eye hook. And you can see that result there and it's spinning just great. The next thing I'm gonna do is just take the back piece and bend that one over a little bit too, and that will hold everything secure. Once everything was put together, I took the windmills back inside and using my kitchen sponge again and some medium gray paint, I'm just going to distress the outside edges just to make them look a little old and worn out. I'm also going to take that sponge along the bottom of the spindle itself, the actual plank that it's sitting on just to give that a little bit more distressing too. 
I just used whatever paint was left on the sponge and dragged it across, making sure to hit the edges a little bit more than the rest of it. This is the welcome portion of those little Dollar Tree signs. And while I was outside, I did spray paint them white. And now I'm just distressing them a little bit more with the leftover paint that's on this little sponge. You guys will have to let me know. I decided not to put these little signs on the windmills, but I'm thinking now that maybe I'll give it a try with one of them and just see how it looks. So you let me know in the comments if you think I should add these welcome signs to the windmills. The way they are right now, I am in love and these will be heading out to the St. Jacob's store this week. While I was working on all of these spindles, I ended up just putting a whole bunch of them together, putting different bases on them and just deciding how I wanted everything to look. I didn't want to take you through that each time because it is very similar. So now I'm using my weld bond glue and what I'm going to be putting on top of these spindles are these two little canisters. I can't seem to find the picture of how these looked before I spray painted them white, but they were blue and they had ducks on them. So I'm going to just go ahead and make sure that you can't see anything of the ducks. The spray paint covered it a little bit, but I'm going to need to do a little bit more texturizing on these to make sure that they are camouflaged. I'm using my chalk paint just to go over this spindle and I'm going to give it a very rough coat because I want some of that wood grain and texture to show through. This is one that I just totally forgot to spray paint outside and that's what they look like. When you spray paint them, you get a lot of that wood grain showing through and a little bit of the original color and that's what I like. Earlier I mentioned that you could still see a little bit of the outline of the ducks so I'm using some regular latex house paint in white and I'm going to put, add some baking soda and then give it lots of texture. I'm going to give the canisters two coats and that is just going to camouflage any little indentations from the ducks that were there before. To give these a little bit more of an enamel look or maybe more of a distressed look, I'm using some gray chalk paint and just a little makeup sponge. And I'm just gonna go around the edges like you see me doing here, just the top and the bottom. And that's just gonna give them a little more character. These little spindle canisters are really fun. Let me know if you think I should put some type of label on them or just leave them plain white. And what would you put inside these little canisters? Florals, of course, are always the standby, but I'd like to think outside the box a little bit and see what else you guys can come up with to help me put in these canisters. I hope you enjoyed my spindle projects today. If you did, please give me a thumbs up that gets me noticed more on YouTube and helps my channel grow. If you like these projects, here's a couple more you might like too. See you in the next one.